Okay, welcome to Waiting on the Lord. Uh, today is uh, February, I don't know what it is. February 26th, um, I'm back. Today's, today's video is titled, um, do, we go to, do we go to heaven immediately when we die? Uh, there's a lot to cover in this, uh, so I'm going to go as quick as I can because it's very tough to record uh, after a certain amount of minutes. Um, I was so nervous in so many of my videos and I didn't know what was happening. It was a kidney stone and they moved very slowly. Uh, my stomach had been stabbing and doing all sorts of stuff. I'd been through kidney stones in my life. Um, I've had many of them. But after that last video, um, I had the worst one I ever had. And uh, it was just a number of minutes after that last video that, you know, my lower back and everything hurt to, like, I'm t past 10, past 10, 10 pain. And uh, I, I, it was colicking for, for about five hours to such a high degree I didn't know what I was really doing. And I tried to eat, I tried to walk, I felt a bit better. And uh, I was sitting down at my dinner table at around maybe 10 at night. And, uh, and I was like passing out over my table. Um, and I had to go to the hospital, went to the hospital. And anyways, it was uh, stone and turned out I had passed quite a few over the last year from my last CT scan. And so I, so there's only one left in my kidney now, which is actually good. So I'm over that I'm over this now. Um, very nervous, man. Very hard to go through those. I just wanted to show you something first I keep forgetting to do. <clears throat> I keep saying, like, I, I wrote a book. This is my autobiography. Um, it's called Into the Tenth Life. There it is. And it's got a back on it there too. And the side. If you ever want to take a look at it, I don't know. I went through a lot of stuff in my life, a lot of stuff that wasn't my fault, a lot of stuff that was. Um, if you're squeamish, I would not read that book, but I'll leave it in the description anyways if you want to take a look at it. It's called Into the Tenth Life because I wasted nine lives. That's basically it. So we're, we are saved through grace alone by, by believing in Jesus Christ and not of works. You can unsubscribe. It doesn't bother me. Um, it's not subscriptions that I really care for. It's nice to see them though. If I wanted subscriptions, I would pretend to be something I'm not. Two things shifted my mind away from pre-tribulation rapture, which I pray secretly is not true. It'd be nice. It would be nice. And I've compared both sides, okay? And when I compare both sides, I saw more favor in pre-tribulation. But I have a different reason. Um, <clears throat> it would be nice, but a message about not having uh, people prepare for a possible tribulation weighed heavily on my mind. I didn't change uh, my mind for that reason, though. In my journey of identifying with Seventh-day Adventists, uh, in only some principles, not all, like, I don't believe, I do believe there's a hell. I believe there's fire and brimstone, because it says so, and Jesus talked about it. Um, and I don't believe in, in a prophetess. I don't believe in any new prophets. A journey about, so this is how I, I came to it. Excuse me. Um, a journey about the Vatican and Catholic Church is what led me there and onto the structure of Daniel's prophecies. If you can't see the evils of the Catholic Church, you can't follow what I'm saying. We all differ, but uh, we are all waiting on the Lord uh, to come soon, right? I find it impossible to ignore 2,000 years of rule from Rome and the Vatican that was so oppressive. It can't be ignored, and it's why I believe the prophecy charts. I believe a lot of revelations 
is about the Vatican, about the Catholic Church and what happened. Yeah, yes, I believe uh, an intense tribulation is coming, no doubt, and uh, we are not appointed to God's wrath, whatever that means, and I'm going to get into that further. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to read as quick as I can. I find it interesting watching intellectuals trying to explain what's happening in our world like Jordan Peterson, and I hope he holds on to his belief in God because he seems to switch in and out and use his brilliance in that. Most intellectuals don't. It's frustrating watching newscasts explaining uh, and the WHO and the, and the United Nations and the WF what's wrong with Mother Earth. It's them, <laughs> and they don't know it. It's them. They're the ones wondering what it is, and it's them. I recommend, so watch this, okay? This is just his video the other day. Amir Sarfati and the Illuminati, one world religion or government. It will open up your eyes. So when people hear Illuminati, all it means is enlightened. And they are devil worshippers. Um, he just broadcasted it the other day. Um, do you know on the dollar bill of the U.S., it says New World Order, or, sorry, New Order of the Ages, underneath that pyramid in Latin, with, with the all-seeing eye. And he talks about that in his, in his thing. I beg you to search for his video. Um, it pertains to, I'll, I'll link that in my thing. It pertains to now, and how we got here from all the mega-rich Rothschilds and Rockefellers. These people still rule us. I just wanted to tell people that when you hear that people sold their souls to the devil, I'm going back and forth here. When you hear that someone sold their soul to the devil, biblically, that isn't possible. I learned that the other day. I always wondered about that, and I thought it was possible. I'm sure one's self can give over to the devil through, through sin, but God owns your soul. God can also give them over to a reprobate mind. You know that saying. <clears throat> so where in the Bible does it say God owns all souls? Behold, all souls are mine as the soul uh, of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Pardon me. What else, and I'm going to get to my main topic. What else must happen before the restrainer is removed? Uh, what else do you think must take place before then? Put that in the comments, please. What do you think should happen before then? Uh, we seem primed for that event, based on all things occurring simultaneously in convergence. So, wars and rumors of wars. Nation against nation. Let's take a look. Is that happening like no other time? <clears throat> North Korea is inflaming tension between South Korea. Um, number one. Japan, who is now rearming and a massive $320 billion per year plan. That's like half the U.S. almost, which is number three in the world for spending because of China and North Korea firing their missiles over their territory. They're firing ICBMs over their territory. The world isn't holding them back either after their brutal World War II tactics. I don't blame them. Uh, I know why they're doing it, and I don't disagree based on what China is, is doing and has been doing for a long time. Um, and obviously the United States is North Korea's main rival. North Korea offered Russia 100,000 troops if he needed them, fully trained, ready to fight in Ukraine. Uh, one that people don't mention is India versus China. Have you seen their brawls at their borders with, with, with deaths that aren't widely reported? I believe it concerns the what it is. 
It concerns their water supply and the dams being built that's limiting India's capacity to use water and build their own dams. So it's getting really bad when these, when these droughts are happening. Who knows, are these droughts gonna happen this summer? China is purposely building dams where not necessary. They're building dams that would be for millions of people where there are literally only uh, like a few thousand people. So India knows they're doing it just to provoke them. Um, <clears throat> and so the 1200 year drought brought this to a head uh, in 2022. That could end in a catastrophe, either nuclear or conventional as both are giants. And most people haven't even read about it. India versus Pakistan, just another seething problem with two nu nuclear armed nations. Many have asked the obvious question about security features with Pakistan due to factions that could take over the, the nuclear capabilities. You know, could, a, could terrorists do that, right? They seem to ingrain themselves pretty much anywhere. China with Taiwan and the U.S. defending plus the general strife between the between the two giants. If China does in fact invade, the US will act, that's what they're saying. Even the war games say over and over that the US will win, and they're usually they're usually right, eh? those war games. It would be at a great cost of thousands of men and, and many ships. And what then? Then you have an angry nuclear armed nation with many capabilities beyond nuclear. No matter what you hear about uh, which country has the most ships and whatever armaments, remember, both have mad, mutually assured destruction. Nobody wins. The Australians are front and center against China as well uh, due to their location and there's bases for the US there. China over 20 years has built islands in the South China Sea. So I watched this happen. Uh, saying it's their own land and, and that they say they have a hundred mile airspace. You know, they, they build a, they come in, they build it and they say, you know, and we have internet, that this isn't international airspace, it's ours. You know, the hundred mile, the hundred mile rule, very nefarious. The U.S. should have stopped them when they had the chance, maybe they couldn't. I watched them over the years build artificial islands using ships carrying rocks and sand. They're very constructive people. For a place to launch possible attack or defense and home strategic missiles. It's like all the islands fought for in the Pacific War by the US was for nothing. Um, give me a sec here. Thought I'd show you two of my candles too. <clears throat> You've seen some of my candles. I make candles. I make beeswax candles um, because you know they're not toxic like the petroleum candles. They're a lot more expensive. They smell so good, and they don't go bad. You can just remelt them. But uh, I make. Uh, about 50 different types. I have 50, I think it's 55 different types of beeswax candles. They don't sell that well. I don't know why, but because uh, when people see them, they love them. But here's some, uh, here's a squirrel. You can see them there. Skull. If you ever want to look it's called we're in business it's on Facebook <clears throat> Iran versus Israel I shouldn't have to explain but things are heating up with attacks both in Iran now and all these weapon shipments which uh, which they which Israel should destroy Iran is also 
many Arab nations enemies although many won't admit it. If Iran gets the bomb the Arabs say we too will get the bomb for protection which is a fair proposition considering the possibilities of nuclear armed Iran. Iran exists to destroy Israel you know there's there's no if ands or buts about that. I'm not talking about the the main people I'm talking about the government and the you know the hardliners. Iran needs to be taken care of as they destabilize the entire globe. Iran wants to wipe Israel off the map and the same is said about America they want to wipe us away too. Uh, not the majority of their people, as they're good people and Christian. There's Christians, good Christians there. Um, just there's, there's good people there. It's the government. If you show pictures or make fun of Muhammad, which I don't, these people will try to track you down and assault or even kill you. Uh, like China, they have stations set up to terrorize free people living in places like Canada or the U.S. so they don't spread democracy. Uh, and they try to scare them by threatening their family, families back home, and tell them to go back to their families. In just in just one year, China managed to get back 200,000 people that way. They would phone them. They phone, they phone them. Like, say you're living in Canada and you're Chinese and you used to live there. They'll phone you uh, a thousand times a day. They'll have people calling you, nonstop, nonstop. I watched a thing on that freedom versus oppression <clears throat> if you don't come back we'll, we'll, we'll hurt your family or something Ukraine versus Russia Iran is involved the US is involved the UK Germany France many NATO countries and now now China is willing to back Russia because we pushed them into that him we pushed Putin into that China and Russia want peace in my belief that's just my belief, but in my own view and many others, the, million, the military industrial complex is pushing war for profits that don't benefit, they just benefit the rich people um, who are making these weapons like Iraq and Afghanistan. How do you stop this? All these countries are giving Ukraine weapons and the U.S. $113 billion. Where does it stop? It's World War III in all but name due to many continents involved. Canada just gave four uh, Leopard 2 tanks. I think we only have like 80 tanks. Like I think we gave four and we gave another four. Like we can't afford to... The spirit of Jezebel... Okay, so I'm switching subjects here. This is just a lot of stuff. The spirit of Jezebel is here. It's because I saw something on a video today um, <clears throat> with reverse gender roles don't you agree just another end time sign with uh, with trans it's the feminizing of men so wh why why I say that is because that that means we're near the end that's exactly what I believe you can see it all in Hollywood and and, and all that when you watch you know, what is it, Rihanna, Beyonce, all the men are feminized. A lot of spewing garbage comes from Hollywood. And I think God will, when the time comes, God willing, very, very soon, right? We'll judge Hollywood. We'll judge Hollywood. Think of all the bad stuff that's come out of the movie commercial TV industry from Hollywood. <clears throat> I hope the prophecy comes true about the breaking the bow of a lamb because I want to see their power dissolve Iran and Damascus being a ruinous heap. I say that because because um, I feel sorry for Israel because you know, they're having to fight for their life. I, they do want peace. They always want peace. And, uh, you know, Iran is a big country and they've got a big population. And they're shipping so many weapons and it's, you know, on their, on their north, you know, in Syria. What, what are they supposed to do? 
you know, it's going to get to, uh, it's going to reach a certain point, right? And right now they have a government uh, that might be willing to do something. So Psalms 2, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Israel always wanted peace and bent to the will of others. I believe that's being put to a stop right now with the new government. It came at the right time considering the destruction lying in wait around its borders with Iranian weaponry and armies. No peace settlements uh, would have ever been good enough for their neighbors because they they want them they want them gone period uh they keep pretending and it's it's stupid they don't want peace they don't want peace maybe some of them do um <clears throat> and then you know you have the voice of iran in their ear right <sighs> okay so here's the title of this video do we go to heaven immediately when we die? It's a good question. People are split on this because because of the verse in Corinthians that says our souls depart departed is forever with the Lord is something to that effect. Personally, I don't believe that based on biblical scripture. In either case, uh, there really isn't a difference and I'll tell you why. When you die, you fall asleep. If you were, for instance, from Moses' day, uh, you would fall asleep and wake up like it was yesterday. It could be a billion years. It could be as many years as when that person fell asleep, say, a billion years ago. In either case, it's very quick. You know what it's like when you uh, go to sleep and, you know, you some people dream, some don't, but in either case, it's very quick right it's like holy you know it's like it's very quick you know and if you don't dream and you, you go to sleep it's like you just went so that's how quick it is and people argue about that because I have some scripture from the Old Testament you might try uh, to debate <clears throat> that it's not meant for the new Testament. So I'll read this. When your loved ones in Christ have passed away, um, even decades ago, to them it's like falling asleep and waking up. Um, but for the living... Sorry, I, I'm just going to read this. So this is an article, and I'm just going to read. It says, answer. The short answer is no. So people are split on this. The Bible is clear that nobody goes to heaven when they die. John 3.13 says, No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. Why don't we hear that scripture preached at funerals? Uh, we've all taught that when we die, we immediately go somewhere for some form of reward or punishment. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible actually describes death like sleep. The dead are asleep in the grave awaiting the resurrection, asleep in Christ. In Ecclesiastes 9.5 it says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. In 1 Thessalonians 4.13-15, the Apostle Paul is calling us ignorant if we don't truly understand what happens at death. He says, But I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. As shocking as this may seem, the Bible teaches that when we die, uh, we remain dead until the resurrection. Daniel 12, 1-4 
and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Sorry. I know it's a two-way thing. You're gonna. I know. I know the verses that people are gonna say. <clears throat> like what Jesus said on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. Um, <clears throat> you're simply asleep. In my view, Corinthians five verse eight means to be absent is to be present. Eventually means eventually because if you die and you're a believer you will wake up at the resurrection like all scripture it's a two-sided debate I know another person will uh, quote Lazarus or the thief on the cross there are so many areas of the Bible that contradicts another but it shouldn't cause any division that's why it causes me stress sometimes to make this because there's division and you know what I'm just expressing myself right Everyone believes in what they believe in, and it's just stupid to attack someone for for believing something that isn't going to damn them, you know? The thing I find about Scripture is that most people think just because it says something, that's exactly what it means. All throughout the Bible, there are many things said that really have many other parts to it. The information isn't always a one-verse answer, and so... There's more to the story. I see people debating street preachers uh, coming up to them on their phones with one, you know, like with one liner saying, well, doesn't it say this? Sometimes those verses are like a storybook. You have to know the beginning, middle, and end before you can understand the whole picture. What God never tells us is that one quote might be attached to another in uh, 10 chapters over. If I find out I'm wrong about something, I'll admit it. If I, if I recognize it, because I'd rather know the truth. <clears throat> so I don't believe that works save us. That's true. So I'm getting onto a different topic now. Wow, time flies by, man. This is also a big topic of debate. Even though it's true, I ask you, what is a born-again Christian? I read James where it talks about faith without works is dead, and I know why it bothers people. I think I do. For some, I feel that they don't want to have to do works. That's what I feel. That's why I feel people are offended. What does a Christian really look like? I'm not saying you have to help someone every single day. I'm not saying you have to do works. That's not what I'm saying. Get that, please. Uh... When I was asked what it meant, um, I said, if you had someone in front of you right now who was hurt in your face, would you help them? I was naked and you fed me, hungry and you gave me food and drink and so on. Would you just be like the people in the Good Samaritan story is the bottom line. I'm not saying go out and seek someone. I'm saying if someone was in front of you like that. When I see people... Um, if you see someone fall on the ground, right? You're going to help them? When I see people getting riled up about it on other sites, I figure that they don't want to be bothered by helping others. There, I said it. I believe in Jesus Christ. Um, oh, I, I mean it like this. <clears throat> I believe in Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm good. And nothing else till you die. Um... It is true that works don't save us, but I'm making an elaborated point. The question is, as a Christian, why wouldn't you help someone unless you couldn't? Seeing your old neighbor with heavy groceries or giving to a charity, if you, if you do have the money, helping a friend in need, it doesn't have to be a month-long need. Be nice to someone, hold the door, simple things. In the end, it's still treasures in heaven. That's the point. It builds treasures in heaven. Um, they also may be weighed against the bad. Can you show your faith by saying you believe in Christ alone? Even the de demons believe that and shudder. I was watching this uh, from an end times video, a different subject. Stephen 
Chikiolanti, I, I don't know how this says last name, it was about oil. Since the 70s, 80s, until now, all the experts and magazines tell us that what we're that we're going to run out of oil. You can look anytime to see what countries have what reserves or proven reserves. <clears throat> the most abundant liquid on earth after water is oil, petroleum. I think God let us discover it at just the right time in history. Some oil use used to be on the surface of the sand. Some say it's man-made because of fossils and organic life. What I heard him say and believe is that the top elites who concoct ideas through families, especially bred to keep the rich rich, like the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, uh, make, make us believe these stories to jack up prices and no matter how, how things go, they figure a way to make money. And I ask you to watch Amir, Amir's Illuminati video. It just means enlightened when, uh, like when the serpent told uh, Eve, you'll be like God. All the Hollywood elites make that stupid symbol of the, of the pyramid like this. You know, they go like this. <clears throat> Not knowing that their life is in jeopardy. Oil in the desert is drilled as far as 40,000 feet, which is 10,000 uh, 10, more feet than a jet travels at in height. They don't know where the bottom is or how far it is. That's just what I think. You're going to have to watch Steve's video. I'm not saying that every country has oil like that. They're not going to run out. Where I live in Canada, we have barely tapped our potential and not even touched Arctic waters yet. And we've discovered a huge reserve. You might ask yourself, how do the elites control everything for so many centuries? Because they control the media. Corporations, banks, schools, everything. And I don't know the real scope of each country. It makes me wonder if all the countries are attached. A question that no one seems to bring up or answer is, um, is God's wrath that we are not appointed to? If you have proof, please share it, but only if it's crystal clear. I will share an article do whatever you want. Uh, I read last night on it. Pardon me a second. I know I don't have much time here, so. Very easy for me to choke. See if I can do this. I may have to continue in another. Uh... Then no one seems to bring up or answer is God's wrath that we are not appointed to. If you have proof, da, 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 da. okay. Yeah, you know what? I didn't. I'm not. Um, I'm not going to read that. <clears throat> Another reason I differ from most people. It's very interesting. What is God's wrath? Another reason I differ from most people is where I believe the Vatican uh, is a big part of Revelations. I believe the chart of 1260, 1290, 1335, and 2300 days. Excuse me, Daniel seven. Verse 25 says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand unto a time, times, and the dividing of a time. To me, this is the Vatican Church changing laws and times. How can one ignore changing God's most holy day, Sabbath day, from a Saturday to a Sunday? That's just one reason I was led down the path that I'm on. Whether you believe it or not, uh, ask yourself this. Is the Pope now speaking, now, speaking blasphemous words that 15 years ago would get him kicked off planet Earth? Uh, they say the Pope is the vicar. 
the, the, the speaker of Christ on earth, who is equal to him on the earth. Uh, how can one not take a second look into what I'm speaking about? A deep research into these things they did over 2,000 years will wake you up. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, I'm more sided with a short and intense tribulation, but I don't think there will be a seven-year tribulation for this reason. Uh, it's the three-and-a-half-year abomination of desolation, which in my view took place already. Do I believe there's going to be an Antichrist? Yes, but he, he could be here now. It could be a pope. When the restrainer is removed, I don't know exactly what happens, but I do know hell will break loose. The Pope's seat is called Vicarius Villae Dei in Roman numerals because it's Rome. It equals 666, which is the number number of a man. I don't know, okay, I don't know, but that's a, that, that is a fact. The literal number of the Pope's seat adds up to 666. So I'll see if I have time for this. This is what I was going to read. I don't. I'm going to do another video, though, guys, because it's very interesting to finish it off. Thanks for watching. It's very tough to... Um, and I'll say a prayer in the next one uh, to record when I get to a certain amount of time. Thanks for watching. Seven-year tribulation or not, I'm going to continue.